February is not only the month of love, it is also the month that the Department of Health is rolling out its measles, rubella, and oral polio vaccine supplemental immunization program. And that means libring bakuna, free vaccines in our barangay health centers. But because of COVID-19 and the parating ng mga vaccines into our country, syempre nagiging hot topic yung vaccines in general. And if you are one of those that has even just the tiniest fear in their heart or doubt about the vaccines, I hope that by the end of this video, I will have assured you that vaccines are safe and more importantly in my practice, vaccines do not cause autism and never has. So let's get talking. Hello, if you're new here, I'm Teacher K and I'm a certified speech language pathologist. Okay, so the past week, I've spent so much time reviewing articles and studies just to get ready for this episode. And so sobrang daming information, the challenge is now actually how to shorten it for you guys so that you just get the summary, the very important parts of it. I decided that I'm going to skip the very scientific medical stuff, but if you're interested in that, I will put all the links that I found very helpful and informative in the description box. So let's start with definition. What are vaccines? So I got this definition from CDC or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it says vaccines contain the same germs that cause disease, but they have been either killed or weakened to the point that they won't make you sick. Some vaccines contain only a part of the disease germ. A vaccine stimulates your immune system to produce antibodies exactly like it would if you were exposed to the disease but after getting vaccinated you develop immunity to that disease without having to get the disease first that's why vaccines are so important because they are not a cure they are a prevention just out of curiosity, I posted a poll on my Instagram and Facebook stories and I asked people if they were scared of the vaccines and that if they had even just 1% fear or doubt about it that they should click yes. And I got 39 people to respond and 85% said they are not afraid of vaccines, but there's still a whopping 15% who said that they have some kind of suspicion against vaccines. In my opinion, 15% is still a pretty big number. Some people shared of what and why they were scared of vaccines. And some people told me that yung kinakatakutan nila is the COVID-19 vaccine. And admittedly, I don't know a lot about it either yet. And neither does the entire medical community. But my sister, who is a frontliner in the U.S., is already on phase two of her vaccination. And she did not experience any side effects. And I know that that's not proof enough of how safe it is. But I'm just saying that no reputable company will release something that could potentially be life-threatening. But other people also mentioned previous cases with Dengvaksha and hepatitis vaccines that caused them to have distrust for vaccines. So I thought I'd read into the history of vaccines themselves because I wanted to know, is this the first time that there's such a fear of vaccines? And it turns out that when the first polio vaccine came out in 1954, it was actually received with enthusiasm. Like people had zero fears about the vaccine. They were just so grateful that there was hope that there was some kind of means to get rid of this very debilitating disease. So saan nagsimula yung takot sa vaccines? So my research showed that it started around the 1960s when a new generation of parents who are post-war parents just started having a general distrust of drugs and pharmaceuticals and authority figures in general. The 1960s was also the time when they started to develop the vaccines for measles and mumps. And naturally, the things that we don't understand or know a lot about about yet, jump talaga tayo magdududa. And I think it's natural. It's part of our 
part of our critical thinking to question first and find answers. Kaso ang problema, sometimes people stop at just doubting and don't find answers. So that's problem number two. Number three is when the U.S. government started to make vaccines more of a mandatory thing, like all children had to be scheduled to be vaccinated. That's when people started to feel a little bit rebellious. And I think that's also natural. Sometimes kapag sapilitan sa yung ipinapagawa, mas lalo mo rin resist. So that looked like that was the third reason why people distrusted vaccines. But eventually laws were made and the public saw that nothing untoward was happening, like nothing bad was happening with the vaccine. So it started to become a more accepted natural thing. Kasumo, in the 1990s, something big happened that just caused this whole vaccination issue to explode. Ito try kong ikwento ng sobrang bilis, pero sa totoo lang, it's such a long story because it spanned more than a decade. Pero ikukwento ko lang sa inyo ng salient points. In 1998, this guy called Andrew Wakefield, who used to be a doctor, but he's not a doctor anymore, with 12 other co-authors, they supposedly conducted a study of 12 children and claimed that there was a connection between the combined measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, MMR vaccine, and bowel problems, and a neuropsychiatric disease, autism. If you go back to my episode on autism, autism is not a disease, it is a disorder because disease would have to mean you know what is causing it and there is still no known cause for autism. And yet in 1998, there's this guy who's claiming that he knows what can cause autism. Dun palang magtaka na tayo, but wait, there's more, more, more. This study happened to have been published in a medical journal. Journal. Siguro dahil he used to be a doctor, it was under the assumption that, you know, doctors, they take oaths. Oaths of beneficence, which is to do good and to avoid evil, and non-maleficence, which is to do no harm. And doing no harm includes maintaining confidentiality or not gossiping or spreading ill news. Hmm. Siempre, when this was released, the world was like, oh, what? This alone is like planting a seed of suspicion, planting a seed of fear. And you know what that does, guys. A seed, that thing grows and grows and grows. But thank you, Lord, hindi naman lahat blind believers in whatever they hear on the news. And people started asking questions. And eventually, this study was reviewed and investigated. And long story short, I will tell you the reasons later, but I just want to make it clear that years later, this study, now just called a paper, it's as good as fiction. This article was retracted by the medical journal with 10 out of the 13 authors pulling their name out of the study. You want to know why? There are more reasons than I have fingers and toes for. So, pinili ko lang yung mga reasons that I thought would really drive the point across quickly. The scientific investigations that followed for many, many years discovered these things and I share them with you in no particular order. One what? example was the scientists that were conducting the study told one parent that his child was child subject 13 when the actual study later written only had 12 subjects. Supposedly. The operative word here is curiously, supposedly. They claimed that all 12 of their subjects were previously normal before the vaccinations, but it turns out later on that two of them were already experiencing developmental delays like repetitive behaviors and delayed speech and language. They found false evidence, falsified, ibig sabihin inimbento. Para bang they just invented some of the relevant characteristics that they reported on the paper for 8 out of 12 of their subjects. When the investigators were interviewing the parents involved after the paper was published, their answers in the interviews did not match what were written on the paper. This last one for me is like 
scandal levels juicy. They found that two years before the paper was published, the lead author, this Mr. Wakefield, was suddenly being paid, was included in the payroll of a law firm that was preparing a lawsuit against vaccines. Dun, da, da, da. Hindi lang po sa Pilipinas may bayaran. You want to know what's worse? A majority of the subjects who were supposedly picked for their characteristics were not actually random. They were referred by the same contact from that law firm. Also, eight months before he released the paper, he had patented his own prophylactic vaccine for measles. So he could sell it after he was so against the combination of MMR. Oh, mankind. It took 12 years of investigations to completely nullify that study. And after lawsuits and court hearings, this Dr. Wakefield was doctor no more. Yay! Was eventually banned from practicing in the UK and was revoked his medical license. Ha! But 12 years, guys, sobrang habang panahon, it's such a long time. Remember, I said, if you just plant a seed of doubt, it will grow. And 12 years, nagbunga na yung puno mong manga. Even if that study was completely false, people had already this growing distrust of vaccines. And vaccines continued to be attacked. The next reason they found to attack vaccines was this mercury-containing preservative called Thimerosal. Hindi ko alam kung yun ang pronunciation on, but they were saying that thimerosal was unsafe for human consumption. So this is no longer in relation to MMR. This is just vaccines in general that contained thimerosal. And later on, they discovered anyway that there was no adverse effects to thimerosal. But while they were investigating that just to be safe, they had removed thimerosal from most vaccines anyway. But just in case I haven't reiterated it enough that vaccines do not cause autism, there were over 25 case studies all over the world, including this Danish study with over 500,000 children involved, finding no link to autism. I will give you a link that links you to all of those studies below if you want to get into it. But here's the most infuriating thing that happened. A celebrity named Jenny McCarthy, who has a son with autism, started to campaign against vaccination, believing completely, paren, despite all the facts that there was a link between vaccines and autism. And siempre, when you're a celebrity, your voice has power, your voice has weight. And so that little seed, naho, just exploded into an entire universe of anti-vaxxers and she got people campaigning against vaccines by writing two books about it and then going on the Oprah Winfrey show. There was one TV show apparently that depicted a fictional drug but that drug supposedly caused autism. So all of these dangerous insinuations in the media Oh my gosh, it's what got us here. So nakita nyo na, meron tayong resurgence of diseases and illnesses that we had previously had under control. Like that measles outbreak in Disneyland or whooping cough. And in the Philippines, polio nagbalik. Let's listen to facts. I know that sa panahon ngayon, it gets harder and harder to distinguish between fake news and real news. Kasi ang gagaling gumawa ng fake news. But if you want to be sure, go to reputable news outlets. So if it's anything about health, I suggest you get your news from CDC or from WHO. Ah. Grabe yung nagawa ng one big intentional lie and someone that backs it up. So I urge you to always be discerning of the news that you listen to. And guys, ito talaga, pabakunahan natin yung mga bata. Libre po ang measles, rubella, and polio oral vaccines sa barangay health centers. So sa mga hindi nakakasigurado, ang measles ay tigdas, ang rubella ay German measles or tigdas hangin, at ang polio ay polio. 
For children 0 to 59 months old, they will be given the polio vaccine. For children 9 to 59 months old, they can already be given the measles and rubella vaccine. So, yan po ang kwentong bakuna. Alam ko medyo irritable akong nagkwento. But I hope that it became more assuring to you with this information that I gave. Because the important thing is we decide because we researched, because we found out, and not just because nadala tayo ng takot. And with that, I end this. So if you found this helpful, please don't forget to like and share. And if you haven't yet, I would love it if you subscribed. If you have any questions or comments or if you want to discuss something peacefully, um, you can head over to my Instagram or Facebook at Teacher K Talks. And that's where today's episode will end. Happy talking.